Hello guys, welcome back. So in the previous video, we studied a little bit about the Indian economy on the eve of independence. In this lecture, we will study about some other concepts. So let's begin with the agriculture sector itself. Now the state of agriculture sector. Agriculture was the main source of livelihood for most people of India. Almost about 85% of the country's population live mostly in villages and derived livelihood directly or indirectly from agriculture. In spite of such a large segment of the population being dependent on agriculture, either directly or indirectly, this sector was facing stagnation and constant deterioration as it brought forward through the following points that is low level of productivity, that is the output, output per hectare of land was very, very low. This led to a low level of output in spite of a large area under cultivation and high degree of vulnerability. That is, agriculture was vulnerable to climatic factors and mostly affected by erratic rainfall, poor rainfall generally led to the low level of output and also to crop failures. No effort was made by British government to provide permanent source of irrigation facilities for the farmers. Now the reasons for stagnation of agriculture sector were, the first one was the land revenue system, that is the land revenue wasn't very very appropriate. The Britishers introduced the zamindari system and the zamindars were recognized as permanent owners of the soil. The zamindars were to pay a fixed sum to the government as land revenue and they were absolutely free to extract as much from the tillers of the soil as they could. Now, their main interest was in rent collection regardless of the economic conditions of the cultivators and this caused misery and social tension among the latter. So apart from this, there are two more systems, namely the Rothwari and the Mahalwari system, they, these were very, very prevalent. The next is lacking of resources. So, as the name suggests, there were lack of resources. And the third one is commercialization of agriculture. Now, commercialization of agriculture refers to the shift from cultivation for self-consumption to cultivation for sale in the market. And due to the commercialization of agriculture, there were some evidences of a relatively higher yield of cash crops in certain areas of the country, but this could not help in improving the conditions of the Indian farmers. Next, we are going to study about the state of industrial sector. Now, the state of industrial sector was also very, very poor. So, let's see some of the points to actually understand the state of the industrial sector at the eve of independence. The first is decay of handicraft industries. So, the traditional handicraft industry in India enjoyed worldwide reputation, but the British misrule in India led to the decline of Indian handicraft industry. The Britishers adopted the following policies to systematically destroy the handicraft industry. The first is discriminatory tariff policy of the state. The next is competition from the machine made goods. And the last is introduction of railways in India. Now, obviously, the Britishers introduced the railways in India to expand the markets of its low priced industrial products. Consequently, the demand of high priced handicraft products started to fall, thus, leading to the downfall of the handicraft industry. The next point is the slow growth of modern industry. Now, under the second half of the 19th century, modern industry showed slow growth. And this development was confined to the setting up of the cotton and jute textile mills. Now, these industries were basically the result of private endeavor. The state participation in the process of the modern industrialization was very limited. As is evident, from some of these points. That is, there was limited growth of public sector enterprises. The public sector enterprises such as the railways, the power, post, telegraph 
were actually confined to areas which would enlarge the size of market for British products in India. The next is the lopsided industrial structure. That is, the industrial growth was lopsided in the sense that consumer goods industry was not adequately supported by the capital goods industry. And lastly, lack of basic and heavy industries. No priority was given for the development of basic and heavy industries. Tata Iron and Steel Mills was the only basic industry in India. Next comes the textile industry that is in Bengal. So muslin is a type of cotton textile which had its origin in Bengal, particularly places in and around the Hakka, that is now the capital city of Bangladesh. The finest variety of muslin was called Malmal. Foreign travellers also used to refer to as Malmal Shahi or Malmal Khas, meaning that it was one by or fit for the reality. So it was termed as your Malmal Shahi and Malmal Khas. State of foreign trade is the next topic we are going to undertake. So India had been important trading nation since the ancient times. But when the restrictive policies of commodity production, trade and tariff were imposed by the colonial government, it adversely affected the structure, composition and volume of India's foreign trade. Following are some of the reasons behind the poor growth of foreign trade. Number one is the exporter of primary products and the importer of the finished goods only. Number two, obviously, Britain's monopoly control. And number third and the last one is the drain of India's wealth. And all of this led to the drain of India's wealth actually. Like all of these points actually led to the drain of India's wealth. Next is the state of occupational structure. So during the colonial period, the occupational structure of India exhibited its backwardness. The agriculture sector accounted for the largest share of the workforce, which remained at a high of 70 to 75 percent of the workforce and the manufacturing and service sector accounted for only 10 percent and 15 to 20 percent respectively. There existed a growing regional disparity with few states such as Odisha, Rajasthan and Punjab, witnessing an increase in agricultural workforce by the states which were parts of Madras presidency. Bombay and Bengal witnessed a decline in the percentage of workforce dependent on your agriculture. Next comes the state of infrastructure. Now, infrastructure comprises of such industries which help in the growth of other industries. And we all agree to that, right? Under the colonial period, basic infrastructure such as your railways, your port for transportation, your posts, your telegraphs developed. However, the real motive behind this development was not to provide the basic necessities to the people, but to subserve various colonial interests. The state of infrastructure under the colonial rule can be understood with the help of these people. Firstly, it was roads. Now, roads were constructed before the independence, were not fit for modern transport. It was very difficult to reach rural areas during your rainy season. So, obviously, when the roads were built, it was much, much easier to travel. Next is your railways. The railways affected the structure of Indian economy in some of the ways. That is, it enabled the people to undertake long-distance travel, and thereby break geographical and cultural barriers. And next is, it fostered commercialization of Indian agriculture, which adversely affected the self-sufficiency of the village economies in India. And the last two is, obviously, water and air and communication. Now, the modern postal system started in India in what? 1837. The first telegraph line was opened in year 1857. The introduction of the expensive system of electric telegraph in India served the purpose of maintaining your law and order. And this obviously came under what? Your 
communication. The next comes demographic condition. Now, various details about the population of British India were first collected through a census in what? In your 1881. And before 1921, India was in the first stage of demographic transition. And the second stage actually began after what? 1921. However, neither the total population of India nor the rate of population growth at this stage was very high. Though suffering from certain limitations, it relieved, it revealed actually the unevenness of India's population growth. The population grew at a rate of what? 1.2% up to the year of what? 1951. Now on the eve of independence, the demographic conditions was, that is, the overall literacy level was less than 16% and the female literacy level was at a negligible low rate of about 7%. Public health facilities were either unavailable to large chunks of population or when available were highly inadequate. Infant mortality rate was 218 per thousand in contrast to present infant mortality rate of your 63 per thousand and life expectancy was very low that is 44 years in contrast to what 66 years as of today both birth and death rates were very high that is 48 and 40 per thousands of persons respectively so i hope you people have understood this chapter now you can go to eduref and attempt these tests to understand this chapter in depth. Also find more amazing content of other subjects like accountancy and business studies. Thank you.